CT Physics and Imaging, A Guide for Technologists by Thaddeus Morris, Chapter 24, Dose Optimization Techniques. As with all diagnostic imaging modalities, the goal in CT is to use the optimal dose of radiation. So what is the optimal dose? The optimal dose is the one that produces quality images with the lowest possible radiation dose. A radiation dose below the optimal range results in less biological harm to the patient, but the images may not be of diagnostic quality. A dose that is too low will result in significant image noise and an angry radiologist. A radiation dose above the optimal range will produce good images, but it will also result in excessive dose to the patient. Several aspects of a CT procedure affect the patient dose. They include the tube current, that's the MA, the tube potential, that's the KVP, the pitch, the beam width, that's the collimation, and patient positioning, tube current, or MA. The milliamperage, or MA, controls the number of x-ray photons leaving the x-ray tube and striking the patient. As MA increases, the patient dose increases. This relationship is directly proportional. So if MA increases by a certain factor, the patient dose will increase by the same factor. For example, if the MA is doubled, the patient dose will also double. As with all technical settings, the lowest MA is not the best MA. Using an excessively low MA would result in significant image noise and render the entire scan useless. Some CT imaging procedures use a fixed MA for the entire length of the scan. For a CT of the chest, this means the same MA would be used from the shoulders all the way through the lungs. A preferred approach is to vary the MA based on the attenuation of the anatomic sections being scanned. For example, a scan of the chest would use a lower MA through the lung fields, but a higher MA through the shoulders and upper abdomen. Figure 24.1. This is the lateral localizer image the technologist uses to set the boundaries of an abdominal pelvic scan. The image is overlaid, that's the dotted line, with the MA settings that will be used during the scan. The MA is lowest through the lung fields and highest in the central abdomen and bony pelvis. These changes correspond with the anatomic denseness of the patient's anatomy. Two potential, or KVP. The kilovoltage peak, or KVP, controls the energy and penetrability of the x-ray beam, but it also affects the total number of x-rays in the beam. As KVP increases, patient dose also increases. The specific relationship is complex and quite significant. When should KVP be changed? In some cases, the technologist may increase the KVP for very large patients in an effort to reduce the image noise. This should be done only with great caution, understanding that increasing the KVP has a significant effect on the patient dose. Fortunately, some new scanners are equipped with KVP modulating technology that adjusts the KVP based on the patient's size. Pitch. Pitch is a variable that applies only to helical scanning, not axial or volume. It essentially describes the distance the table moves compared to the beam width. Remember that increasing pitch results in a faster scan with fewer projections. See chapter four for details. As pitch increases, patient dose decreases. This relationship is inversely proportional. For example, if the pitch increases by a factor of two, the patient dose will decrease by a factor of two. If the pitch decreases by 20%, the patient dose will increase by 20%. Beam width or collimation. The beam width is calculated as the detector width multiplied by the total number of active detector rows. For example, a scan of the abdomen might use 0.5 millimeter rows and 32 total rows. That's a total beam width of 16 millimeters. As beam width increases, 
patient dose decreases. The relationship is complex, but it relates to the off-focus radiation called penumbra outside of the functional beam. Using more detector rows and a wide beam results in less patient exposure to penumbra. Patient positioning. To minimize patient dose, the patient should be positioned directly in the center of the gantry with their arms and everything else out of the scan field. These issues are most important when using dose modulating software like AutoMA by GE or CareDose by Siemens and Sure Exposure by Toshiba. Scans using automatic dose modulation adjust the dose based on the scout images. The scanner basically reads the scout or localizer images to evaluate the size of the patient and sets the MA accordingly. Leaving the arms in the scan field makes the patient look larger than they really are. The scanner recognizes this increased attenuation and increases the technique, which of course increases the dose to the patient. Patient centering is critically important in dose optimization. If the patient is positioned off-center, the scout images will misrepresent the size of the patient. For example, a patient positioned too low or too high may be interpreted by the scanner as being much larger than they really are. As a result, the scanner increases the dose. Figure 24.2. These images are three different AP scout images on the same patient. The first image on the left was acquired with the patient perfectly in the center of the gantry. In the second and third images, the patient was positioned too high in the scanner. The patient appears larger and the scanner increases the technique.